Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord God. You may be seated. It's wonderful to worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. Isn't it great that God, who is such a great and awesome God, He is a holy God, but He gives us an opportunity to come to Him, to be in His presence, to just lift up our hands and worship Him. He is the Lord. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the Creator God. He doesn't distance himself from us. Greetings once again in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's good to be in the house of the Lord and wherever you are watching us as we live stream this. You're watching the live stream this morning. May the Lord bless you. And our prayer this morning is the Lord will strengthen each one of us through his word. As we spoke last week and as we know as believers, whenever there is an issue, there, whenever there is a concern, whenever there is a problem, we always look to the word of God for answers because Jesus Christ himself, who is the word, the word of God says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. And he who is the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And John writing in his epistle, in his, uh, the gospel says, and we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten son of God. And that is what we look to. As we see whatever is going on around us, there's more worry and concern, more worries and more anxiousness is going around. And this morning, our prayer and our request is that if you get any messages from people, please do not pass messages which don't make sense, which increase our anxiety. If there is something of hope, if something from the word of God, if you can encourage someone, Pass on those messages. Strengthen someone. Look to the word of God. Look to God in the midst of all this. And that's the reason we are always excited. People say in the midst of this pain and misery that is going on around the world, when you cannot even gather as a church, and some are even saying the churches are closed and prayers are stopped. No, it is actually the other way. More and more people are praying. More and more people are turning to God. <laughs> and our prayer is that even in this moment, in these moments of concern and pain, our face will be turned up and we will say, cry out to God, Lord, have mercy on us. Because he is a merciful God. The word of God says he is good. He's merciful. His love endures forever. The word of God says about God, God is love. And he is slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. His mercies endure forever. So this morning for our meditation, we're turning to Psalm 27. With all the things that are going around and all the messages that come, I just don't even watch some of the messages because some of them are just increasing anxiety and giving all kinds of, you watch news. If you're anxious about so many things, I would su suggest that you stop watching the news also. Be on your knees, pray. We need prayer for everyone, especially for those who have to go to work. Our heart goes out to those who have mandatory duties. They have to go out to work. Let's pray for them. Let's pray that God will keep them safe. Let's pray for people who are falling sick. Let's pray for the healing of those people. Let's pray for the healing of the land. The word of God says, the people cried out and the Lord, Lord heard from heaven and he sent forth his word and healed the land. Amen. That is the God that we serve. The psalmist this morning, as David is declaring, this is a psalm of David and a lot of people say different things about when he wrote this psalm, but David had a lot of troubles in his life. Even as he was anointed king as a young boy, a young teenager, he was anointed as the king of Israel, but he was running for his life for so long. Saul was after his life. His own family, brothers hated him. His own son rebelled against him. So many times trouble. The enemies was against, were, were against him all the time. He had to fight the giants. But we see that in the midst of all that, the word of God is strengthening us and he is encouraging us this morning as we read Psalm 27. It reads, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. 
Verse 4 says, One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me, nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 14, the last verse reads like this. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. It's a beautiful psalm, and it can take hours together to go through each and every verse, but we're going to look at some verses and see to receive strength from the Lord. Holy Spirit is speaking to us, and my prayer this morning is that we will all be strengthened, that the peace of God will take over our hearts, that we will continue to pray, we will continue to humble ourselves, and we will continue to pray for each other, not only in our families, not only in our neighborhoods, but our workplaces, and those who have to go out, different countries, different places, we will continue to pray for them. This is not a time to look at passing judgments or doing things like that. This is a time just to humble ourselves, come in the sight of the Lord and ask him for his mercies. The word of God says his mercies are new every morning. So the psalmist says the Lord is my light and my salvation. If the Lord, the creator God is my light in the midst of all this darkness that is around us, there is sad news everywhere. You turn down the news, the numbers are increasing, all these kinds of things go on. If you look at that and if you look at focus on those things, you will see darkness all around. But the psalmist today is encouraging us that he is my light and my salvation. If the Lord is my light, then he says, whom shall I be afraid? Whom shall I fear? I don't have to be afraid of him in anything. I don't have to be afraid of anyone because I trust in the Lord God. He is my light and also my salvation. David knew very well that there is salvation only of the Lord. In Exodus, if you see, God is saying, I have heard the cry of my people and I have come down to deliver them. Amen? This is the time the Lord is looking down on us. We have to look up and he is, he, his ears are always inclined to the cry of the righteous, the word of God says. You simply have to come and acknowledge him that yes, Lord, I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, you died for me on the cross of Calvary. I believe in you. When you do that, he is your Savior. You cry out to him. He's saying, the David, uh, verse 1 again, I'll repeat. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So when people ask you questions, this is the simple answer you give. As a believer, you know that God is my light. Jesus Christ is my light and he is my salvation. So what am I going to share with other people when they are worried? When they're saying, what is going to happen? A lot of people call. You know that. A lot of text messages come. What's going to happen? We do not know about tomorrow. Yes, even I do not know about tomorrow. But I know one thing for sure, that he knows my tomorrows. Amen? The songwriter says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. My tomorrow is safe in his hand, so I am not worried about anything. 
Yes, in these times we need to be wise. You get the information, but you have to use that information. Someone said, if you just get the information, that is too much information. You will get. You might probably get overwhelmed by the information and be bogged down by the information. And you are thinking, what is the solution? What when you get information, when you hear the word of God, you have to apply it in your lives also. We have to receive the word of God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my... David is not saying because I'm a king, I'm so popular and I'm, I've been anointed by God himself, so I'm so strong. He is saying, it is not my strength. I believe in a God who is my light in the midst of darkness. In Psalm 119, 105, it says, your word is a... Light unto my path and a lamp, lamp unto my uh, lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He is His word is the light for us. He leads us. He guides us. He gives us instructions. So what am I worried about? Yes, people who are in the administration, those who are in charge, we need to pray for God's wisdom for them to take the right decisions. But instead of worrying and causing worry to other people in the family and outside the family in workplaces, we need to be proponents of the peace of God. And that's what we're looking, we're looking at the word of God. It says in verse 2, When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. What is he confident about? He is confident in the Lord, the light of his life. The one who has, the word of God says very clearly in Ephesians, Jesus Christ has brought us from darkness into his marvelous light. So when we are walking in his word, when we are walking in his marvelous light, as we said last week, you heard very clearly, Jesus said, do not worry about tomorrow. For the trouble of this day is sufficient itself, right? When the birds of the air, the animals around, they don't worry, why are we worried? Yes, there is concern. So what do we do? We look to the solution. God, you are our help. You are our shield. You are our refuge. And you are the very present help, as Psalmist says in Psalm 46. A very present help in times of trouble. Amen? God is that God. So David is saying that I'm not afraid because, not because I have become strong or I'm so great, but because I know I trust in the Lord God. And in the midst of this in, in verse 5 it says, For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. See, we can make our safe houses and we can go into safe places and we can keep our... I think the, it's very good the administration has advised us to stay back home and not to go to workplaces and whatever is required, we need to do that. The necessary things will continue. So this morning... Our encouragement to you is, this is what he says, the word of God says, verse 5, Psalm 27. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. When God is hiding me, what am I afraid of? Whatever may come around me, it is not going to affect me. I am hidden in the presence of God. Yes, people may, may be affected. We might be falling sick also. It, may, it can happen to anyone. But when our trust and faith is in God, again, I want to re repeat, as I said last week, some people may say that, okay, believers are totally immune to this. God's word very clearly says, he shines the sun on the wicked and the righteous, both. Amen? So it's the same. God is not going to say that, okay, I'm going to shine the sun on the righteous people only, only on those who believe in me, and not on those who do not know. God is gracious God. He's giving us opportunities. But what we have to do is, when we receive the word of God, we have to take a step. God has given us the free will. We need to make a decision to follow him, to listen to his word. And when you listen to him, this is the word of God. For in time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. I will Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. So in the midst of pain, the question is, what do we do? We sing praises to God. Not for the trouble, but in the midst of trouble. You do, you're, not, you're not going to be, oh, thank you Lord for sending trouble. No, he doesn't send trouble. But in the midst of trouble, all the evil that is going on because there is evil present here. Like God is there, there is evil also. 
So we're not thanking God for the evil, but in the midst of that danger, a lot of people have, you know, the, the enemy. We may say, where is the enemy? The, this disease is an enemy, right? It's affecting a lot of people. But instead of talking about the disease and not talking about the enemy, we're going to talk about the conqueror, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? He is the victor. We're going to talk about him. And what, that is what he is saying, that I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord God Almighty. Verse 4, he says very clearly, In the midst of all this, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. For what? To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. With all the damage that is going on, with all the closing, with all the people not being able to go, and a lot of people are concerned and worried. Yes, we need to be wise. We need to pray for those who have to go out. But at the same time, we need to be careful. And if the administration stays, stay home, we stay home. Clean your hands. Whatever the steps are being taken, let's take that. Let's be wise. God empowers us with his wisdom. He's a wise God. But in the midst of that, what we have to do is not just worry about things. But as the psalmist says, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Our desire should be in the house of the Lord. Now you may say, well, we haven't come to the church. Church is not the building. Church is you and me, those who have believed in Jesus Christ. Wherever we are, the presence of the Lord is there. Amen? So to dwell in the house of the Lord, you are at home, you are at workplace, you get time in between your workplace or you get break time, kneel down on your knees and call upon the name of the Lord, bless his name, sing praises, as someone sent a, a, a video last week and it was beautiful to see people who have gone to shop. They're just four or five people. They're praising God. There's a hospital on top of the roof. People who are free, they're just standing in different, they're keeping that distance, mandatory distance, six feet and all that. And they're worshiping God. There are different places that people are worshiping. What is happening? Prayer is not ending. Or people are not, yes, there is the enemy's care is there, the, 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 the disease is there, and it may be spreading, but there is a solution coming very soon. A lot of people are being reco have been recovered, al have recovered also. So let's look to the Lord. Let's look to the word of God. And as the psalmist says along with me this morning, I want to do the same thing. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty. Because when you see the beauty of the Lord, all these ugliness will go away, right? He turns ashes into beauty, amen? Amen? Because he who came, see, the fifth Christian faith is simply, it starts with the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came into this world. He who was the darling of heaven came down into this wretched world because mankind could not save himself. So he came down. He lived 33 and a half years and he went to the cross, laid down his life. And as we said last week also, the famous word that you might have heard so many times, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He bled and died on the cross. Even Pilate, the governor, said, I find no fault in him. But the people said, crucify him. He came with that purpose. He came to die for the sins of the world. He died on the cross. He was buried. But death could not hold him as we sang this morning. Death could not hold him. On the third day, he rose up triumphantly and he went up to heaven. Those who believe in him, he's coming back very soon to take them to heaven. The only thing, those who are watching us live this morning, if there is anyone who till now has not surrendered their lives in the hands of God, simply confess of your sins. Lord Jesus, I come to you. I confess of my sins. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I come to you. Lord Jesus, I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. I have believed in your word. I believe in the death at the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Accept me as your child. If you pray that prayer, it's as simple. And we repeatedly say that it's not difficult. You don't have to hit your head on the wall or go somewhere to mountains or climb up there, go to a cave or hide yourself or do penance for so many days. No. 
Simply come as you are. Isn't it wonderful to come to this Savior? The Savior King Jesus Christ. That is why the psalmist is saying, therefore, verse 6, therefore I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. And then his prayer says, Hear, O Lord, verse 7, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, this is what the Lord is saying to each one of us in the whole world. God is simply saying, seek my face. And you know the response that David gives is, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. If that is the response, God is going to bless each one of us. Let us continue to worship him. Let us continue to praise him. My heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Is that the response that we have this morning? Again, as I close this morning, my prayer is that God will give you the peace. The peace of God will abide and dwell in your hearts and minds. And we pray that God will provide you security and so safety. Because as we read, I'm going to read that in closing. Psalm 46, verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. There is a lot of turmoil going on all around us. But if we submit our lives in the hands of God, he's, his peace is going to take over. Instead of us being worried and concerned about all these things, we look to him for peace. And the word of God very clearly is, and God, when he promises, word of God says, God is not man, that he he's not a liar. Man may promise and break promises, but God's promises are always with yes and amen. Praise God. I'm going to read one more time. Verse 6. This is our response. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. You might say, how will I sing in the midst of this trouble? Surrender your lives in the hands of God and you will find peace. Immediate peace comes into your heart. Immediate peace comes. He doesn't take time. He doesn't have to say, let me look at my records, how bad you were. No. The word of God says, come as you are. And when you come to him, Jesus said, when he was on this earth, he says, come all you who are burdened and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When he takes our yoke, there is nothing to worry. Casting all our cares upon him, let us continue to pray for each other. And those of you who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, continue to pray. And we pray that God will, you can find the link and reach, us, reach out to us if you want to contact us. We will pray with you. And we pray that God's peace will abide in your hearts. Let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for these beautiful moments, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your word which gives us peace. Your word which gives us strength. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? In the midst of trouble, O oh Lord, you hide us in your tabernacle, in your presence. So we ask you, Lord, that you be with each one of us. Those who are watching us live, Lord, bless each one. Cover them under your blood. Especially we pray for those who this morning have surrendered their life and accepted you as their Lord and Savior. Bless them, O oh Lord. Stretch forth your nail pierced hands and touch them. And heal them, O oh Lord. We especially pray for those who are affected by coronavirus. We ask you that you send forth healing. Let there be healing in the land, O Lord. Help us, Lord, that we surrender our lives, Lord. We confess of our sins and, Lord, humble ourselves in your sight. And we say, Lord, you are always in control. God, who is on the throne, we thank you and we praise you. Help us, Lord, as we read from your word, that we will continue to worship you. Sing praises to your name. Encourage each one, O oh God. Help us to pray for each other. When we hear of any news, O oh Lord, help us straight away to submit those requests in your presence. With humility, O oh Lord. Help us to be humble. Help us to exalt your name. You be exalted in our lives. You be lifted up. We praise you. We thank you. We bless you, Lord. 
Jesus Christ, you receive all the glory and honor and majesty. For you are the majestic one, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. In the most precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless us all.